good day. As we have learned, financial management focuses more on the decision-making skills of a financial manager that is based on the analysis of data. As a financial manager, he is required to have several financial decisions. And today we're going to discuss one of those. The scope of financial management, as we have learned, involves the financing decisions, the investing decisions, and the dividend decisions. Today we're just going to focus on the financing decisions. Financing decisions are concerned of how much, where, or how finance will be raised. And it is a decision of how financial managers will determine the capital structure of a company. Now, what is the capital structure of the company? The capital structure is the debt and equity distribution that makes up the finances of the business, that also makes up the capital of the business. The capital structure is the major financing decision that the financial manager, it is the initial financing decision that financial managers should take. So financing, financing decisions, this is where we are going to get the money and how much. So it is the estimation of how much money do we need and how are we going to get it. It could be through debt, it could be through equity, it could be through personal savings, depending on our choice and depending on the circumstances. So. We need this much money. This is what we are going to consider when we are computing how much money we need for our initial capital, for our financing. We have, number one, long-term financial requirements and the short-term financial requirements. Long-term financial requirements, also known as the fixed capital requirements, meaning these are the things that you're going to use in the long run. This is your major in major investments, major requirements. You need the land, building, equipment. And for short-term financial requirements, this is, your, this is your working capital requirements. So again, we have learned from the previous lessons that working capital means this is the operating, uh, the operating, say, funds. What is needed to run the business from our wages the purchase of raw materials to the utilities. So combining the long-term financial requirements and the short-term financial requirements, we would have the, their total sum, and their total sum is how much we need. And that is how much we need to finance our startup business, especially if it's starting, the long-term financial requirements and the short-term financial requirements need to be addressed. It needs to be estimated. So again, long-term financial requirements, these are your fixed capital requirements and your short-term financial requirements are your working capital requirements. So long-term major investments and short-term just uh, the operating investments. So how do we decide? Where would we get our finances? So when we are starting up, we could choose for if we have personal finances. We have, debt, we have debt financing and we also have equity financing. Debt financing, meaning we are going to take up loans. And equity financing, meaning we are going to chop up a portion of our ownership of the business and sell it in the stock market. The advantage in debt financing is that you get full control of your business. You will have debt, but you will have the full control of the business. You did not give other people, you did, not, you did not give strangers the right to your company. Whereas in equity financing, you're asking for their money in exchange for the stock of your business. So if you're going to have like a big shot business and people invested a lot of their money in you, you are getting their money to finance your business but you have to pay them afterwards this is our this are these are your dividends these are your the profit sharing so which one should we choose that financing or equity financing if we have personal finance if we're that rich we should go for course we should go for personal finance by all means but 
if it comes if it comes to debt financing or equity financing we have to weigh up we weigh up we have to um when it comes to debt financing and equity financing we have to weigh out several factors another one in um another one in sources of finance is internal financing this is when you've already established your business internal finance meaning this is are the profits that have that we have yielded from our um from our operations these are your uh, profits your reta- your retained earnings retained earnings meaning we don't use them it's stagnant it's there and we have no use of it because we already have our working capital fixed and we already have and we don't and we don't have um other investments to finance until this one that's why we reserve the internal financing for our investments so we have discussed why why should we choose that that um uh debt financing or loan financing or why should we go with equity financing number one it is cost how much is the cost we need the cost of the debt how much will be the interest will we will we be able to pay the interest uh and in equity how much will be how much will we get from these shareholders from the stock from the stock that we are going to sell to these people in exchange for their share of the business. Number two is the risk. There's always a risk, especially in debt. So we have to weigh out the risk if we have the capacity to out, say outweigh the risk if we are confident that we can pay the debt. This is true, especially if you are a sole proprietorship. In sole proprietorship, when you go bankrupt, uh, when you go bankrupt, they have a right to take all of your personal properties whereas if you're a corporation they could just get um, the properties of the corporation so risk one of the factors here if you can take the risk and uh, if we're going to have the next point the return of investment the return of investment definitely outweighs the risk so how do we decide with the return of investment the general rule is if the return of investment is higher than the interest rate, we should go for debt financing because kaya nating mabawi. We could definitely gain all of our um all the interest and all of the debt that we have acquired. We could easily do that. But if our return of investment is lower than our than the interest we should go with equity financing. That is the general rule. Number four is the cash flow position. The cash flow position, meaning if the cash that's going in and out of the, say, the, of our operating cash flow position, meaning our capacity, the corporate, the company's capacity to pay out uh, the loans, to pay out or the operating expenses of the business will there be sufficient will there be a sufficient amount left for us to pay for the debt so if we have sufficient amount that will be left it will be reserved for our debts so that we could pay them right away then go with the debt financing if we don't we have the option to go with equity financing number four and number five is the capital markets previous points and uh, previous points that we have discussed is that the economy plays an integral role in all of these things. So in capital markets, if we have like a boom period, uh, it is uh, advised, it is uh, strongly advised that we go with equity financing because we could share, we could, uh, because we could um, sell the shares at a much higher value. And if it's on the low, so if that means we could go with equity financing if it's on the boom period. If it's on the depressed period, we go with debt financing because we cannot lose any more shares of our business. Number six is flotation cost. These are just other costs, especially in equity finance. This is applied in equity financing. Um equity financing mostly these are you have the broker's commission you have 
uh, the transfer fees and stuff like that. Those are the flotation costs. If we want, um, if there's too much flotation costs, we disregard equity, equity financing. And number f uh, and the last one is the shareholders control. If we're not completely starting out, if our business is not completely starting out from scratch, meaning we already have existing shareholders, they have control of the business. They have a say in the business as well, especially if there's this majority or it's actually an equal one. The control of the business resides on both of your decisions.